This show is brought to you by our friends at mpb.com, a website where you can safely buy and sell and trade used camera gear online. If you're buying, you get peace of mind with a six-month guarantee. And if you're trading or selling, MPB, well, they'll send a courier to pick up your kit on a day you specify. And once it's arrived back at their warehouse and gone through the checks to make sure it's all been graded properly, you get paid direct into your account quickly. MPB.com is a very easy to use website. It's helping photographers to buy quality use kit or sell gear you no longer need to free up cash. Go to MPB.com. So it's a special pop up Monday show today a walk with a photographer called Tom Humble. I've talked about Tom on the show before in his book, The Winter We Walked Alone, a project that became this photographer's catharsis during the winter lockdown in that first year of the pandemic. We'd endured a a late spring, early summer lockdown, and in the UK at least, the weather had been kind. But when winter arrived and the government essentially cancelled Christmas and told us to stay indoors once again, except for essential work and grocery shopping, daily exercise, that kind of thing, it seemed somewhat and perhaps inevitably bleaker. Would this ever end? 50% of the profits from the book, featuring black and white pictures from Tom's hometown, Southend-on-Sea, on the east coast of England, a very quiet Southend-on-Sea on the east coast of England, went to the mental health charity Mind. Fitting, as Tom has, like many creatives, found the metaphorical rug pulled from beneath. Work had dried up, and who knew what was around the corner? The book struck me at the time as one full of messages in style and in composition, but this was a chance to talk with Tom and ask him about his work and approach in making his first book during a time of much personal doubt. And we talk a lot about mental health on the show, so I was delighted to meet with him. And atop this, I'd heard from Tom about his Kickstarter project. So this is a show in many ways with a best before date, that being Friday 29th of September 2023. So, what is this Kickstarter for? Photoco, a social media app for photographers. An app designed specifically for photographers as a place for us to share and socialise and learn and grow. But Neil, not another social media app trying to take on, say, well, Instagram or insert whatever you think this sounds like here and at first you know i wondered that too but then i watched tom's promo film which i will put on the show page today and i started to think more about it time being of the essence i asked tom if we could take a a walk in person you know like the old days before zoom convinced us we were all in the same room so we met up along an old abandoned railway line halfway between our respective homes, last Sunday morning as it happens, and strolled to talk about that book and this app. A Monday pop-up special then, featuring Tom Humble, and of course I will link to the project on the show notes today on the website photowalk.show. Today on the Photo Walk. I strongly believe in things like photography, music, any creative aspiration is good for your soul and your and your mind. I barely see any photos. They're all adverts and videos of people doing stuff. Like I just want to look at people's photography work. Honestly, if I can make this app a reality, that every single photographer will one day be on this platform and um, it will change the game. The Photo Walk. See, I thought, Tom, you were going to be like me and bring your X100V, but you haven't. You've, <laughs> you've gone and brought a GFX. Look at that beast. Beautiful. Yeah, so I, uh, I actually almost brought my X100V, but I decided to bring the GFX 50R with me because it is a nice carry around. Yeah. A bit heavier than the X100V, obviously, but uh, yeah, I've got a vintage lens on there. I was going to say, that's, that's a vintage lens on there. What's that? That's a Voigtlander lens, a ah. 40mm uh, F2 Ultron lens. But obviously, because of the conversion with it being a medium format sensor, it ends up being more like a, I think it's a 35mm f1.4. Right. Which is nice to have, right? And price wise, that means we don't talk about kit on the show very much, and we're straight into kit. Yeah. <laughs> price wise, though, I would imagine For the body that's, or that's the, a, lens. the lens is a good deal cheaper than yeah, some of the lenses I, I see. Like, I think it was like £500, pounds, 450 £500, oh, okay. pounds, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. 
I shoot it square because oh, I like yes, shooting a lot yes, of film, yeah, right? Yeah. So shooting black and white. It's nice. And I've got a uh, diffusion lens on there, glimmer glass by Tiffin. Makes it just look a bit more like film. I've watched a couple of your films of late, actually. One of them was a diffusion glass. It wasn't a diffusion glass. What, what is it? The one that... Uh, oh, the, that Cinebloom filter. Cinebloom, yeah. that's it. Watch that. And also um, your tips on... Because I know you like shooting square. Oh, I do love on, square. On shooting yeah. square and not putting... What was the number one... I think the number one thing I gleaned from it was don't put stuff in the middle of the shot. Put something in the middle of the shot, yes. I mean, yes, you can put something in the middle of the shot, but I think people have a tendency when they're looking at a square frame to just put it in the centre because it's such a small area to look at. But, uh, yeah, that's a big no-no, in my opinion. (laughs) And um, (laughs) when Tom pulled up to the... uh, the car park. I sent him a what three words. I think you might be the first person I've sent a what three words to. Oh, Paul really? Sanders started this by sending me whenever, or well, when we met up last, he sent me a what three words. And a few photographers of late, of late, when I've been meeting them, have sent me what three words. And I must admit, when I originally received one, I thought, what am I supposed <laughs> to do with vanilla tree basket? Basket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are these random three words? Yes. Yeah. It's a very good concept, though, and I yeah. uh, I use it quite. I like, actually, yeah. Um, but also, you turned up telling me that you'd, you'd not only shot a wedding yesterday, <laughs> but you, you'd gigged as well. I did, yeah, I gigged. Yeah. It's been a busy weekend for me, definitely. Yeah. What, what do you play? Uh, drums. Oh, OK. What kind of band? So it's more, I'd say it's quite sort of indie rocky, um, with a little bit of blues kind of, yeah, it's quite a nice sound. We haven't actually played in like 10 years. What? Um, yeah. And, uh, and you chose last night. I chose last night of all nights <laughs> to get in front of a big crowd of people and play. How did it go? Went swimmingly. Oh. Yeah. Many people come up and say it was great afterwards, so that's good. Good to hear, good feedback. Who are you influenced by musically? Myself. Uh, the band's a bit of a mishmash, but I really love bands like uh, Beatles, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nirvana. I loved oh, yeah. growing up. Yeah, I really like Nirvana. I uh, was listening to Phil Linnett. Oh, yes. In the car yesterday. Oh. I'd forgotten Phil Linnett. Yeah. I'm sorry, Phil. Some of his stuff, amazing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Old Town, I was they listening don't to. Don't make it like they used to. No. Anymore, do they? God. It's all just noises and <laughs> screaming. And... God, we're that close, Tom. You've got kids, I've got... Yours are slightly younger than mine, but we're that close to sounding like our dads here, I think. You yeah. can't hear the words these days. I heard something the other day, that kids are now having naughty, fancy dress parties. Are they? 2000 to 2010 is a fancy dress party now. That what? era is now, you know, like you think you go to parties of people dressing up in like 70s clothes. The 2000s is now one of those things. Is it a long, How old yeah. does that make you feel? <laughs> God, I could almost be trendy if I rolled out some people of my are, old clothes. People are dressing up as Avril yeah. Lavigne and uh, yeah. all sorts now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a few things to talk about. And um, I'm going to start with, uh, with the book... I know it's a few years ago, this book, but The Winter We Walked Alone was your, your COVID project. Yeah. I suppose some people might say, well, why did you choose a second lockdown? Had it not all sort of been done by then? So I wouldn't say I even chose to do this, por- this project. It kind of came to me more than anything. Yeah. I don't know if you remember the lockdowns. Like, it's funny oh God, yeah. that do we're I. talking... Yeah, because I was talking to a someone at a wedding venue recently one of the managers there and if you like can cast your minds back there were two major sort of lockdowns in the uk weren't there i know we had the little ones but we had the first one in the summer which was kind of a nice time uh, i mean not nice obviously it was scary there was this the new virus but the weather was good yeah. and i think people were there was almost like a novelty to it that you know people were at home they weren't having to go to work People were drinking maybe alcohol in the sun, you know, we were doing workouts, going for runs, all this kind of thing. But then the second one was nowhere close to that, was it? It was Mm. over Christmas, weather was cold. They cancelled Christmas. Can you believe it? Well, I I remember about a week and a half before, and it was mooted by the newspapers that... Boris was going to cancel Christmas. Yeah. And we all said, no, he won't do that. He's not brave enough for that. <laughs> and he did it. And, uh, yeah, it was a dark time, uh, obviously, for myself, and you know full well, being a, a wedding photographer, it was, it was tough. You know, work dried up. Everything was still going ahead, barring weddings, it seemed, and we were just kind of left on the back burner, not being given much help at all. So that was not fun. And obviously, with everything going on, I had a lot of time on my hands and I just needed to do something. And 
I think if you remember, we were given that daily allowance of like an hour to go for a little yeah. walk and yeah. get back inside, yeah. right? Get back home. Yeah. And I actually used that to walk up and down a stretch of seafront. Uh, it's like a seven mile stretch. And I just kind of walked backwards and forwards and home again. And I did that pretty much every day, maybe every other day, and just shot a lot of black and white film. So the project, well, it didn't start as I must make a book. No. No. It started as me, it was more for my mental health more than anything. Yeah, walking. Like, I strongly believe in things like photography, music, any creative aspiration is good for your soul and your your mind. Yeah. Your wife supported you a lot over that period, didn't she? 100%, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I was going through tough times, obviously, feeling like a failure, you know, feeling like my business was in tatters and the world was going to pot. So it wasn't a great time, and I found that, you know, the photography really helped pull me through, just having something to focus on. And over time, I started noticing, noticing that the pictures were kind of representing how I was feeling, you know? Like, it wasn't a pre-planned thing, but... On, upon after doing the project for a few months and reviewing them, I was like, right, I actually, there's something beginning to form here. Yeah. You know, this is representing not just how I'm feeling, but how the country's feeling, how we're all feeling at the same time. You know, depressed, lonely, like isolated, scared. So then I started sequencing a book and seeing what I had and what I'd need to to make it into a, an actual book. Had you taken any inspiration from other projects about the pandemic? No, I hadn't actually seen any other projects. I'd taken inspiration from other photographers I'd, yeah. I admired in terms of like sequencing and stuff. But obviously I'd imagine loads of people were doing similar things because they had <laughs> a lot of time on their yeah. hands. But that thought didn't actually come into my head until after uh, I made the book. It's very likely that there's going to be a hell of a lot of, in, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years' time. Can you imagine the archive that's going to appear? Because a lot of photographers, and I'll include my... Oh, I'm going to move over here, some cyclists belting towards us. A lot of photographers, including me, who made pictures during that period. Um, I actually locked my... My images away, if that doesn't sound too dramatic, I'm yeah. not really locked away, but I, I didn't really want to look at them again. Mm. There's going to be a lot of archive, isn't there? Yeah, I think it's definitely something to review and something that they're going to be teaching about in schools yeah. and stuff in yeah. the future, and all these pictures are going to be moments in time. You know, when you look back at now at the riots and stuff that happened in the 50s and yeah. 60s and all these movements for women and this is this is one of them times that in another 10 20 years we'll be looking back on all these things and just thinking i can't believe that that happened of course black lives matter was was during that period um really important historical moments now the the um the photography you say it was along a seafront it was south end on sea which is your is that is that home for you it is yeah yeah, born and bred i've lived in south end south end End. (laughs) all my life sorry i had to do (laughs) the yeah that's a cabby impression that's how you pronounce it actually yeah (laughs) if you don't pronounce it like that then uh, we kick you out (laughs) all london cabbies come from south end don't they 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 do like it down south end (laughs) (laughs) it's a wonder it brings back lots of happy memories for me because the first car i ever had was a vw beetle and uh, yeah, 450 quid. You wouldn't buy one for yeah. that now. It was absolutely immaculate. Not a working one, is it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, the first trip that I made in in uh, in the car um, was down to South End, and it became uh, my regular trip with my girlfriend Catherine at the time. Yeah. We'd uh, load up the Beetle. Down to South End. Down to the beach. Yeah. Get yourself a 99 of a flake. <laughs> <laughs> but we'd go in the winter as well. Yeah. Now, South End in the winter, like any seaside town, there's, a, there's, a, there's an element of melancholy about it, isn't there? There's something... You see the amusements closed and you yeah. see the rides have got chains around them and so on. Those pictures appear again in your project, Mm -hmm. but there's a different feeling this time, isn't there? Yeah, so I mean, in our hometown, obviously, because we live there, we're we're down the seafront all the time, and actually we prefer it as a family because it's quieter, you know, in the summer season you get a lot of tourists come down, like you say, a lot of people like you coming down in your VW Beetles, (laughs) (laughs) taking up all our beach. Bring it down my money. (laughs) But in the winter, it's a lot quieter, we actually still use the beach and the amusements and stuff, but this obviously was just completely different because every single shop, arcade, amusements, everywhere was completely closed. You couldn't access anything. You'd walk on the streets and see maybe a couple of faces. It was just, it was like a ghost town, you know. It was, uh, And I just felt obliged to document it, you know. It was just, it was all subconscious. No, no conscious thing about making a book or anything. It was just, this is mental. I've got to take pictures of it. You wrote a poem. I did. Um... <laughs> I you laughed, but it was strong. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. That just... I could be a musician. I do like 
write my own songs and yeah. lyrics and stuff and it just come to me and I, I wrote it at some point and I thought you know what, actually that works well with the book and I put it at the start of the book. Well, you put it at the end as well, didn't I you? I put it both, yeah, just because I felt like you read it at the start and you're like, oh, that's nice. And then when you flick through the images and you read it again, you're like, oh, yeah. it hits home after you've seen the, the photos. For seasons to come, lest we forget the winter we walked alone. To protect front line and save our souls, it was best to stay at home. No festive cheer, nor family near, one hug could cost a life. We wish away that awful year where death and fear was rife. So wake me up when summer's here and the fear has melted away, when life can once again be lived and skies are no longer grey. No longer shall we hesitate, procrastinate or moan, for seasons to come lest we forget the winter we walked alone. Um, during the period, one of the conversations I have often on the, this program when we talk about, I call it now the thing that shall not be mentioned, it's almost become this Voldemort character of, uh, of, of history, but um, a real history. But um, one of the things that I, I often moot is that uh, I feel a bit awkward if I say, do you know what, with everything that goes on now, I mean, here we are today walking along a track, there's runners, there's cyclists, there's families out. If we were in town, no doubt we'd be in a coffee shop. It almost feels like it didn't happen. Yeah. Now, for me, the price I paid was all financial and, and the stresses that I carry through to this day of business not being as good as it was prior to, prior to that, that shall not be mentioned. Yeah. You had a tougher time because you lost your grandparents. Yeah, so, so I mean, same as you, being a wedding photographer, financial issues uh, wasn't fun, you know. And then that lockdown over the Christmas time, like I say, it just kind of kept getting one thing to another. Like in the space of two weeks, my wife's grandmother passed away, unfortunately, and then literally two weeks later, my grandfather passed away. Oh. And then actually what's not mentioned in the book is that a few weeks after that, my wife's mother was in hospital uh, with long COVID and she was in hospital for like six, six seven weeks and oh almost Lord. died herself. Wow. And she's still getting over it now. So it was, uh, it was just, yeah, just kind of like one, two punch just kept on happening. So the project definitely helped me get through those moments. Joyce and Arthur. Yeah, Joyce and Arthur. Yeah. Yes. Well, what do you remember of Joyce and Arthur? Uh, Joyce actually gave my son his very first teddy, who, although he's 11, he still loves to this day. Ah, so it's what's Teddy's nice name? Puppy. It's a puppy. little puppy. It's, yeah. It was a, a, just a teddy. She had like a wall with some teddies it's on. It's not a dog, is it, by it's chance? It's a dog. <laughs> yeah, by, yeah, no, actually, it's a cat. <laughs> well, you can have daft stuff like funny, that. Yeah. yeah, that would actually be funny. A sense of irony for a young lad. Yeah, I yeah. know. No, he's, he's very to the point. What do you want to call it? Puppy. Okay, yeah. then. <laughs> that makes sense. And what about, uh, what about Arthur, then? Yeah, so Arthur, that's my, uh, my granddad. Uh, yeah, the kids met him quite a few times. Him and my nan, actually, who went a few years prior, yeah. uh, they lived in Gambia, of all oh, places. Did they? Yeah, and they come wow. over quite a lot, but they had a, wow. lived on a compound in Gambia, which was just beautiful out there. Really yeah. beautiful, yeah. yeah. And they like, created a whole new family out there as well. It was uh, pretty special. But yeah, he was a good man. And um, it was a shame, obviously, what happened. But what was more of a shame is that. You know, we didn't actually get to see them or no. go say our goodbyes. It was, no. uh, yeah. Well, look, the path that we're taking here seems to have... Does it go across the road here? Yes, it does. Yes. We're walking along a, an old... Uh, oh, yeah. We're walking along an old uh, path, uh, which was uh, an old railway line, rather, which, was, uh, which is now a path. But this is one of, the, one of the Dr. Beeching cuts, I think the famous... British Dr. Beeching Cuts. And as we walk along, you occasionally walk past a house that's been, well, that was once a station, which must be fantastic, I think. Yeah. Yeah, my son's big into his trains, and I'm pretty Is sure we, we've been up here before, but, um, yeah, I love being outside, walking in nature. I think that's uh, what most people need to kind of ground themselves, bring yeah. them back into a sense of calm. How many of the books are still available? Um, not a lot, actually. Ooh. So, uh, in the initial run, I, uh, which was great as well, because I think I was a little bit worried that <laughs> none were going to sell at all. Yeah. You know, it was just more of a personal project. You know, I've got obviously a few YouTube followers, but I don't have like a massive following. Not like uh, you and Kev or anything. Well, <laughs> I've got the same as you. So, okay, all right. <laughs> We're grounded, Tom. We're grounded. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I uh, initially with the first run, I ordered 150 
and um, sold almost 100 just off the get-go, which was just great. Yeah. And then um, I think I've got about 10, 11 left, not a lot oh, left. There must be another rerun, or well, another rerun, a rerun. I'd, I'd like to do another run, but I think we'd see see how it goes in yeah. terms of uh, the the want for it, you know. Because this isn't a print on demand project. This is you, the printer you used. You have to get a certain amount up front, don't you? Yes. Yeah, so with the initial order, um, I just made sure that I was going to be covered yeah. for how many I needed. So yeah, it went well. Who did you choose to print? Uh, near me, there's a company called XYZ. Oh, uh, uh, I know Based them. in Colchester. Yes. Yeah. yeah, very nice, very helpful. Explained every... I had no idea what I was doing now. I've never made a book. <laughs> I've never used InDesign before. Right. So um, they were very helpful in, you know... Oh, so it was an InDesign project, right? It was, yeah. yeah. I've got myself a little template online yeah. somewhere. I'd spent ages sequencing, printing them off, you know, making mock books, making another mock book, and then eventually when i was happy going with a final final design yeah yeah, yeah. well i i shudder um at some of the the images inside not not because <laughs> they're not because they're photographically they're out of focus <laughs> <laughs> they're terrible tom they I, are br- cool. <laughs> I brought you on a walk just to tell you how, how out of focus they are no not at all no i shudder because the one thing i still see that makes me think oh there's a moment of oh is the signage yeah 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 all the signs that were just sort of up everywhere yeah. just like yeah. stay at home think about life save lives you know it was very intense wasn't it constantly being bombarded with these free word phrases and yeah. protect the nhs which is clearly very important yep. but as a freelancer and we share this you know this this, this together did you feel i don't want to put words into your mouth but did, i i felt uh, i felt a sense of unworthiness i felt a sense of ugh. Do you know what choices I've made in my life that I'm not key? <laughs> that <laughs> phrase, key worker. What surprised me is that obviously delivery drivers and stuff were key workers, and you're like, yeah. oh, maybe I've made a wrong, yeah, <laughs> wrong yeah. career path here to not be key. But um, well, some of it felt very personal. It definitely felt like we got left on the uh, on the back shelf mm. a little bit during that time, and um, had to make our <laughs> make our way down ourselves. Once everything was up, we're like, guys, we're still up here. Can we <laughs> come down yet? <laughs> There was one particular picture in there, and you've talked about this in a film, which I'll link to, actually, about the book, where you, you felt... I think there's a sense of frustration, stroke anger, that you got down to the seafront and that even locked off. You know, they, they could tell us not to go into shops, but now they've told us not to go into the sea. <laughs> there, was, there was a particular area, oh yeah, where they barred it off. No fun here, please, go home, yeah. save lives. Single subjects. That's how you chose to... I don't think that was a conscious decision, was it? But that's what it became. Well, so initially I had no concept of even involving any subjects whatsoever. But during the walking that I was doing, eventually I kind of, I think just randomly one day saw someone fishing. This was the first portrait he took. And I just went, do you know what? I'd actually quite like to take his picture. You know, he sat there by himself. Yeah. So I asked him, he said yes. And um, instantly that gave me the confidence. And I was like, this would really add to it having some because every time I was out on a walk I was just seeing people walking by themselves everyone was doing the same thing you know you weren't mixing you wanted to get outside and get some exercise so I thought why not I started asking people for pictures and I think it really added an extra element of you know loneliness and isolation to the uh, project but by the subject I mean even even static non-breathing subject they're they're solo within your your compositions too aren't they yeah that that was key once I realized what I was subconsciously doing then obviously I could actually consciously do it and started seeking that out you know it's like a lot of the shots where I'd set up a scene you know with an arcade in the background all the shutters down and everything and I'd wait for one subject to walk past and then you know sniping whatever they call it so once uh, it became conscious it became easier to to get those kinds of photos you mentioned the first person that you uh, that you photographed there was uh, somebody that I I didn't know this from looking at it just in in the book the former uh, former inmate ah, yes. you never asked him what he did yeah. in, in there for 20 25 years i suppose there would be an element of uh, concern for any of us asking well what did you do to land you in prison for that long but yes uh, I, I do regret not asking him but um, at the same time i don't know whether i wanted to know but uh he was like a biker you know he had his his biker gear on yes, a big beard yes. you yeah. know big motorbike oh, boots good. yeah i think he actually stopped me and asked me where there was to go because everything was so quiet like he had literally i think that day or the day before got out of prison from a 25 year stretch come straight to south end 
because I think he said he was looking for somewhere to settle. And he was like, where is everyone? Why is everything shut? I was like, do you know what's going on with the world? Like, How bizarre. Yeah, so I had to kind of like explain to him why everything was shut. And yeah, we just chatted for a bit and I asked him if I could take his picture. And then when we were talking, he was like, you know, I've just got out of prison, I did this stretch. And I was like, right. oh, oh my, that's a long stretch. You must have done something, you know, not too great. But I, yeah, I never asked him, took his picture and went on my way. That's a classic when the aliens come to land right, story, yeah, isn't yeah. it? You know, they've, they've just landed. They're thinking, well, this is a bit of a quiet town. Well, I just, you know, I thought that was, it was quite important to put in there because as bizarre as it was for us who were experiencing it unfold, can you imagine going to prison for 20 years? Yeah. Coming out and the world being different anyway, but how different it would have been like with no one being around, know, you know? know? And all know. the shops being closed, you'd be like, what's happening? And the shopping baskets was the other, in the film, the other story I was, I was drawn to. Well, you were drawn to the shopping baskets. Actually, yeah. that, that's not a single subject there, is it? There's a, there's a twin subject going on there. With the, yeah, the trolleys. The kissing trolleys. The kissing trolleys, yeah. yeah. So, again, just on one of my walks, you know, I noticed these two trolleys kind of facing each other. I looked like they were kissing or almost like, you know, you know how boxers are like head to head before yeah. they have a fight? They're they're, like they're, they're facing yeah. off of each other. Yeah. That, when I saw that and I, I was sequencing and I put them together, you know, there was a lot of domestic abuse going on at the time due yeah. to the fact everyone being locked in and it oh. just kind of felt like it yeah. fit with that, you know, like... So they really worked well in a sequence next to each other. There was a lot going on in your mind by the end of this project, wasn't there? Well, once it became conscious, I really... That's when I started to get excited. I was like, I thought I was just doing this, you know, for, for fun or for, you know, to keep me busy. And I was like, actually, these are starting to yeah. mean something. Yeah. These are starting to show how I was feeling and how other people were feeling. So that's yeah. why I went with it. Really important piece of work. Um, the, the very final picture is, again, two subjects. It, it is a sort of a opening of the world composition, isn't it, really? Yeah, so uh, on one of the final walks, I think this was around March time, sort of before they lifted the lockdown, uh, I was walking along and I just saw, you know, it was kind of as the sun was setting, there were two gentlemen sitting on a bench close to each other talking so like they were no separation yeah. and i just not two meters right not <gasps> two meters talking yeah, they would have got arrested had the police have seen them i tell you but um it just felt like do you know what i think things are gonna be okay yeah and that's how i ended the book yeah do you remember your first wedding back from uh <laughs> from covid I, because i remember I, there were two in particular i remember neither neither because there were still rules in place yeah neither kept to the rules no, no one kept to the rules, and I don't think the venues enforced them. Um, I think everyone just wanted to get back and have fun. Yeah. I do remember the first few being quite leery. I don't know if you do, everyone being up for a drink. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they got out of hand. And obviously, I was still of the frame of mind, like, should we be touching? You know, as everyone's hugging and uh, drinking and laughing. It, was, it took a while to come back, though, to be comfortable with it, you know? Yeah, I remember being at a venue and... Uh covering the dancing dancing which should not have been happening by the way yep surrounded <laughs> yeah. by people like yeah. should i have a mask on or, yeah i just remember watching the spittle <laughs> flying through the air to uh to Ch Ch is it chelsea there. dagger yeah. yeah chelsea chelsea that one yeah yeah it was i mean it was it's it's always a roof raiser at any party yeah but when i saw that spittle flying <laughs> through the air i mean i'm laughing now but i i think i was very concerned at the time i used to describe it as when i came home have i dodged another bullet yeah same for me and i think because of what had happened with our grandparents and my mother-in-law before that i was very much of it's all fine they're over dramatizing it you know why are they locking everyone's down no but it, unless it affects you firsthand yes you didn't give it the seriousness it yeah. deserved and when that did happen i did you know take a step back and think oh actually we should maybe you know sanitize our hands yeah. <laughs> and wear face masks so it was, yeah, it took me definitely a few weddings to get back into the swing of things and be comfortable with even just hugging the bride and groom, you know, yeah. goodbye at the end of the night. I don't know whether, I don't know whether you've noticed this. I still notice venues uh, have uh, sanitising gear on all the uh, yeah. san sanitised stations. Sanitisation stations, yeah. I think even has to alliterate, doesn't it? On the, uh, on, on the tables used for the, for the ceremony. Yeah, so I think a lot of venues still have that stuff lying about. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's only a good thing, isn't it, to have clean hands? At, right? our, at our gym, Tom, they, uh, during that particular time, not that I look like a gym goer before you say it, but <laughs> at, a, at our gym... We, they, uh, do you remember the time when you couldn't get the, the gels? 
and they had uh, enforced a law that if you were seen taking more than your statutory two handfuls mm. that you're allowed per visit, <laughs> your membership was just cancelled. Instantly. Yeah, it was. They, they yeah. caught you on the camera and you're out. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Overuse of sanitization gel. Mm. How do you think we'd deal with those days if they came back? I think it would be a different ball game for most people. I think a lot of people have lost their patience with it. I think a lot of people wouldn't be... They wouldn't fold so easily into doing what they're told, if that makes sense. Mm. Are you a rule, rule breaker or did you... I think you'll find in most relationships, one of them likes to break the rules, one likes to keep them. My wife is the rule keeper, so... Uh, <laughs> I'll say no more. Yeah. I saw your film, Photo Co. And it's important we get this right. Pho, P-H-O, capital P, To, capital T-O, T -O, yep. and then Co, C-O, capital C. So we've got uh, PTC, but Photo Co. Yeah. Photo Co. So it's, ten it's essentially three words, the first part of all the three words, photography, yep. tools, and community. So PHO from photography, TO from tools, CO from... I mean, a name is a name, right? What, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook? Twitter, what's Twitter? Snapchat. Oh, X, sorry. <laughs> they always see, the name's not what matters, it's what it does, right? What does it do for you? Why, why would you be interested? Yeah. That's, that's what matters. Yeah. Photoco, Photoco, Photoco. Hey, have you heard of Photoco? Yeah, man, it's really good. Photo, it's just the name. Did you spend hours labouring no. over it? <laughs> or? I didn't. I came up with that straight away. Did and I, I had multiple people tell me they don't like it and right. I should change it. But I was like, well, it doesn't, it's just a name. It's yeah. same as like band names, like Nirvana, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Pixie. They're all silly names. The name doesn't matter. It's what's behind the name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the name does encapsulate what yeah. it does. Well, we're, we're going to break it down into the parts... Although some of it does cross-pollinate, so there might be a bit of repetition as we go along. But I thought this was an important conversation to have as a standalone photo walk. Here we are photo walking. Neither of us, by the way, have taken a picture yet. <laughs> have you seen anything you want to make? make yeah, well, it feels like we're just walking on a path surrounded by trees. So yeah. Why don't you take one, which I have done. So we'll wait until we see something a bit more You're interesting. You're not being inspired by the trees. Well, I'm going to take a picture of you soon, Neil. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, yeah, so... The, I, I thought as well as we have this conversation that it would be very easy for this too because um, I, I certainly intend to and this shouldn't colour anybody else's opinion of what, what we're just about to talk about I'm certainly going to join the Kickstarter but um, I didn't want to approach it as a fanboy okay. because it would be very easy to do that So, but I'm not going to challenge you just for challenges sake okay. <laughs> I've, I've thought about things that did occur to me mm -hmm. when I thought, oh, do we really need another photo? I perhaps didn't say it quite like that. I'm yeah. slightly dramatising it. So, where do we start? Well, I'm going to ask first of all, and I know you're not a big fond fan of it now, but um, which social apps do you use? So the only, I think, two platforms you'll find me on at the moment are Instagram and YouTube. Yep. Uh, Instagram, I don't really post to anymore. Um, certainly over the last, you know, six months I find it's just going downhill in terms of a photography sharing platform I'm sure it's increasing in good ways for people who want to share videos and TikToks and reels and you know dance naked <laughs> to, to you some... said this on the film you have this thing about everybody on TikTok dancing naked I don't know is it, maybe it's just my Instagram maybe what I'm following you looking at? following the wrong people I feel like it's just it, I, and if I scroll through my feed and I follow pretty much just photographers yeah I barely see any photos. They're all adverts and videos of people doing stuff. Like, I just want to look at people's photography work and appreciate it yep. and tell them I like their photos, you know, and get the same back in return. And you don't feel that's happening with Instagram. Do, does, do the comments not do it for you? So, I don't feel like that's happening with Instagram. I don't feel like that the, the algorithm is working in favours of photographers or anyone sharing still images. Yep. In fact, I know that's not the case because they, they do push the videos more. Um, and I've spoken to, like I said, uh, in the campaign, over hundreds of photographers for feedback before I launched the campaign, but also just to get their opinion on what's available. And they all said the same thing, that they're not happy with what's out there and they want something better. So that's why I thought, screw it, I'll try. I'll try. You know, I've had this idea since 2018. Well, that's what I... That intrigues me, because you're saying that you don't feel that photographers are getting what they want from Instagram. But back in 2018... When you first started to 
investigate this. And it wasn't just a just an idea. You actually were investing. You had an investor in it. <clears throat> but wasn't 2018 not necessarily the golden period of Instagram, but it certainly wasn't that period where people were saying there's too many adverts. Yeah, so the app actually started more as a tool-based app. Right. So you'll notice in the app there's the tool section, and that's what it initiated as, was just a bunch of tools in one place that would help a photographer. Um, so the first app iteration was actually called the Photographer's Toolkit. Right. And it was predominantly the tools and partly the community aspect. The sharing aspect is what come afterwards over time you know through growth and more feedback from other photographers like i say i've spoken to loads and loads of people including some very big names i don't want to drop names here no, i wasn't going to say tell me who yeah <laughs> but i'm interested in what genres perhaps that doesn't say give me the names film and digital um <laughs> and they've all got you know their own youtube channels and stuff okay. with 100 you know plus thousand but uh, not simply sometimes. wedding or social a bit of both. I actually reached out to, you know, street photographers, wedding photographers, okay. landscape photographers. I needed, you know, to have a, yeah. a bit of all the... Because it's going to incorporate all of these genres within the app, so... Do you think it'll be more likely to be something that's... See, here, here I am, I've jumped forward already, to be something that social photographers and street photographers will, will be the, 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 the main audience for this? Honestly, if I can make this app a reality, that every single photographer will one day be on this platform right. and um, it will change the game. That's a grand statement. Yes, I mean, that's... Uh, yeah, it is a bit of a statement, but I truly believe that. Like, I, I honestly think it would completely change the game in the way that it works for other social media apps as well well because there's other social medias out there where it's just social media but if you can incorporate the social element plus some extra benefits for the user you have everything in one place you know why would you ever as a photographer if i can open one app that's going to have a place where i can share photos view other people's photos you know talk to other photographers socialize learn and have a bunch of tools that are going to help me become a better photographer what other apps do you need yeah what about vero so didn't that start to step into that I don't that know arena. that they've ever done anything in terms of the tools, community, you know, like these camera clubs that I've got in yeah. mind yeah. are really going to be pushed to the point of how camera clubs used to be. Yeah. I don't know if you were ever part of one, but no, no. the whole point of them was, you know, to socialise with other photographers, obviously, like it's, it's important to socialise and talk, but to go there, show your work and have like constructive criticism, not have some bot or some troll on, you know, Instagram living in some basement somewhere going, your photo shit. Yeah. But having someone say, actually, that could be better if you cropped it in a bit or if you placed the subject there or do you know the rule of thirds? Like, you know, give you constructive feedback, which these groups are for and that's what they'll push. And, you know, we want to push real life meetups through this app as well. You know, if you've ah. created this camera club, meet in real life. How, will you, Go how will you police that though? Because that sounds, by the way, a heavenly place yeah but the reality is trolling is yeah. easy yeah so obviously we will need moderators and that's why the app has a so the photography share and what, what is like the vintage instagram where you can share photos all that kind of stuff is free to have the tools in the community will be a subscription base so we can obviously fund to keep the app running to pay the people that need to moderate it and make sure everything's going well just rewinding for a second to camera clubs because it is a shame that uh, i mean you mooted in the film that i watched that you you felt there were less and less camera clubs now i'm not sure about that or the numbers it, it feels to me and this is again just a gut feeling of those that i have visited and i'm speaking at a couple coming up this winter they tend to they tend to attract an uh, a more mature photographer and and it's yeah. missing out a whole demographic of photographers that are really important to keep this thing alive yeah. as photography being a thing not just something you snap yeah i agree and i think like you say it, it is more of a generational thing because it used to be more commonplace before social media before online you know socializing and i think anyone sort of definitely from you know my age and younger they're not even aware that these clubs even existed mm. you know um, the way that they learn to socialise is by watching YouTube videos. That's why you have all these YouTube photographers and stuff. They think, right, I want to get better. Let me watch a few YouTube videos. Like, you know, you said you watched my How to Compose Square Format one. Yeah. One of my most popular videos. Because there's obviously an abundant amount of photographers out there that want to shoot square format and yeah. they want to learn. With things like camera clubs, they'll be able to meet other people. And obviously the community section has the um, Q&A section as well. 
which will eventually just become a, you know, a compilation of every single photography-related question you could ever want to know, with every answer there ready for you. We were talking. We were so, so we were so busy talking. Um, that we we walked past. Did you see the uh, station yeah. we walked past? We're going back, I, right? We are going back. Well, there's only one way back, yeah, okay. so <laughs> I do need photographs of that. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it fascinating to see old platforms yeah. uh, that no longer no longer work? Um, video now, not having videos on this platform is that really a good thing? I mean, photographers now are more multimedia than ever they were. Mm-hmm. Sound as well is mm-hmm. being injected a lot more into uh, into people's work. Mm-hmm. So, is it a trick missed? There will always be possibilities for updates in the future, and the way we want to make this app work is that when there are potential updates, we actually want to send out you know questionnaires and surveys to the entire user base to get feedback before we roll out these updates. That that's the plan. However, I do just want this to be a stills photography sharing app because that's my passion. I like video. You know, I'd like make YouTube videos yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I enjoy yeah, doing it. Yeah. But I want somewhere where I can just look at other people's photos because there's something to me that's much purer in a, you know, a still 2D capture of a moment. You know, it's, video is nice, but there are platforms for that. And I think that there's not a platform, barring, like you say, Vero and stuff like that, they're trying and there are some good elements to it, but nothing comes close to what this could be now I don't I honestly feel like there's nothing out there anywhere that's even remotely close to, to what this app could be it's still fascinating to me when I oh see you sit, tell me what you're seeing talk me through it while you're <laughs> photographing it because that's what we do on this well, program so yeah it's like it's a lovely field of wheat uh, with a dilapidated barn in the background little rusty gate in front uh, nice little shot with the sun and the clouds behind I might get this jogger going past there you go did you get the got jogger? His, got his head, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he was happy about that. Well, I think he was head down running. He looked like a serious runner. All the gear, plenty of idea by the looks, <laughs> by, by the looks of it. So video is perhaps something, but it's not... Not for, it's it's not the starting not for game, is it? No, 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 no. Yeah. It's interesting when I talk to um, photographers, um, particularly those that belong to. Uh, I've asked a few seven agency photographers of late what they feel about the, the two dimensional image and whether whether it has longevity. Yeah, I, I, I think I think it will always have longevity. I think that you know photography ever since humans have been able to capture moments you know in time in a two D image, it's been fascinating to me yeah. well we're approaching the a1 just up the way so i'm going to suggest we loop we back. make an about turn loop back you might meet that runner again <laughs> you, you never know morning and uh we can get pictures of that i think it might have been the cold green station actually this is the cold green cold green line great place for walking i should have brought barney you'd have loved this you should have 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 brought your dog yeah 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 yeah. he just he he looked at me sort of he he rolled over this morning on the bed i know we shouldn't have a dog on our bed (laughs) and it was like oh do i have to i'm I'm having a sunday lion oh lucky barney (laughs) yeah i should have said to him you don't realize tom last night shot a wedding (laughs) did a gig went back edited the whole wedding he's not even slept yet (laughs) um advertising Mm-hmm. How on earth are you going to be able to... And I'm assuming that Instagram have that many ads because it's part of... It can't just be let's shove as many adverts on there as we can possibly muster. There must be some thought behind it. Well, from what I've read and researched, that the vast majority of adverts on um, Instagram and Facebook are literally just for financial gain. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, since they changed the meta, and they put a lot of money behind their... Um, virtual reality metaverse which flunked as I don't, I'm not sure if you're aware of no, any of this I'm not. but they lost a great deal like billions I'm talking and ever since then you, I don't know if you're paying attention but you're like the adverts would have doubled up if not tripled on all their platforms mm. and it's you know they need to make the money like anyone else which is fair enough but what we're offering is obviously an app without adverts due to having the subscription based on there which means that we'd then be allowed to not have the adverts on the app itself. So, the f- so the, let, let's uh, describe the differences between the two. The the, f- the photo bit, the first bit, yep. or the faux, the faux bit. The faux. That's free. 
Yes, so the phone is, uh, it's essentially like a Instagram when it was good before it had the videos and adverts. Actually, I think they always had adverts, didn't they? Um, but it's like, so it's a photo sharing social media platform, create your own profile, obviously, like you do on other ones. But it offers a lot more customization on options towards users. You know, you can really sort of customize your profile okay. in terms of what you can display, showing you like your most used gear and stuff like that, your actual photos on your grid. So if you imagine if you've got an Instagram account, how uh -huh. they look, you can drag and drop and edit. How, how they look like, whether they're full image crops, whether they're cropped to square like Instagram. And then you can actually click on, you know, edit and drop, drag and drop them. So you, it's almost, your profile becomes more like a personalized portfolio, like, almost like a website, you know? So it, when someone clicks on it, they really get a vibe for who you are and what your work's like. Does that mean you can separate within your portfolio landscape from... Um south end on sea pictures of amusements no so there's no so obviously you'd have your normal feeds in chronological order but it's just your actual profile when you come onto someone's page is just the customization to display you know obviously your photos how many followers you've got yeah just every little option that you could have you can right. turn them off turn them on drag them drop them it's just offering the photographer much more customization to how they want to be shown and perceived to other photographers the pushback from photographers when it comes to spending money mm -hmm. is I, I, I think noticeable mm -hmm. I'm a photographer so I feel I can say that and, and it, it is the modern currency of the internet of well why do I have to pay for it yeah. surely it should all be free I have yeah. this conversation uh, with myself and, and with those that listen uh, and want to comment about why I should have a Patreon. Surely it's, it's a podcast, Neil. It should all be free. Yep. And um, one of the... It's only a couple of weeks ago since I mentioned this. A photographer I spoke to on the programme a while back said, well, just because, it's, just because it's free to view doesn't mean it's free to make. Yep. And that's, that is probably going to be your, your biggest challenge, isn't it? Yeah, so initially, uh, the entirety of the app was a subscription-based, and it's only upon, again, feedback, like I've mentioned, that I've had from other people. One in particular, um, I will mention his name. His name's Bray Hunzenicker, uh, and he's a film photographer out of America. Large following, but we had a few email chats backwards and forwards, and he really helped with uh, tinkering a few things. But he, like you've just said, made me realize that you know there are many photographers out there that don't want to spend any money on something and that's when the photography aspect become free because i was like actually that part can be free and actually it should be free he's, he's right you know if people just want to share their photos and view other people's photos and comment and you know interact why should they have to pay for that yeah however the tools in the community there's a lot of effort that goes into that you're getting a lot of stuff out of this that's going to benefit you so you know, if you want a new camera, you've got to pay for it. If you want a new lens, you've got to pay for it. If you want a light meter, you have to pay for it. These tools included in here, the main one being the shoot planner. Which I love. Which Don't allows you to basically search the entire catalogue of photos that everyone's posted to their account. So you can dwindle it down to your specific interest. You know, like if you're a street photographer and you're going to London and you want to look for some good spots, you can literally you know, put in these filter options for street photography, the location, London, and populate all these pictures, which you can then use to not get just inspiration from, oh, that's a good shot, I want to try and get one like that, but the locations as well. Mm. You can then pin these like a Pinterest board to your shoot planner, which then, you know, when it comes to the day of the shoot, you can open it up and go, right, here's all the inspiration I need, here's the locations that I want to check out. It will then tell you the weather the time the sunset and the location of the sun you know sunset. tide times all of this Whoa. stuff will be included yeah. just in this one little thing in your pocket so yeah i think it's only fair that you you pay for that a lot of effort's going to go into making it well that's a resource that constantly will need to be updated exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um so the the faux bit we've we've uh, we've dealt with now the 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 two and the co yeah um which is the tools and then the uh community, community. um is there a three-tier system then so so the, the next two tiers along, do they cost different amounts of money to, to have tools and then further join the community? No, so that would just be included in the whole thing. So That the, what, by the way, was not, not an exclamation yeah, of what I just... What? <laughs> ...suggested. I was a cyclist. <laughs> um, yeah, so the photography aspect is entirely free. Yeah. And there will be glimpses of what you could have if you pay for the description because we want people to be able to see why it would be of benefit so yeah so the tools like i say you've got the shoot planner in there but then there's a bunch of other 
almost independent apps that already exist, right? So you've got uh, Light Meter, Sun Tracker, you know, Weather, Spirit Level, all things Viewfinder app, things that are photography related that, you know, I have and I, I love using all the time, but I have to go in and open all these different apps. So the whole idea back in 2018 was just to make an app where they were all in one place. In one place. And that's where this whole thing evolved from over the space of the past five years. So there's not a multiple tier here. If you're having tools, you're part of the community, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, if you're part of if you're having the tools, you're also part of the part community. Of the community. Yeah. Well, look, we're here at Coal Green Station, so I've got a whole host of other questions to ask you, but... Um, I feel I want to take a picture because I'm fascinated by, by stations that have succumbed to the, to the, uh, the undergrowth. Are we going to get some pictures now? Yeah, well, I'm going to get one, just so I can prove I walk with you, Tom. <laughs> I just like this old brickwork that's crumbling away. What, what, what catches your fancy? Uh, at the moment, I'm just, yeah, taking some pictures of the old brickwork, some, some of the old benches and stuff. It's a nice... We're basically on the actual... Railway well, line, aren't a, yeah, we? Yeah, this yeah. would have been a twin track here, wouldn't it? Up, up and down track here. I think it's fascinating when you still see the old poles that, that would have yeah. been fencing poles. I mean, I, I would imagine these trees, although they look hundreds of years old, they're not. No? Well, it can't be, can it? Because that's growing out the oh, platform. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. It does look like a bit of a whomping willow from Harry, Harry Potter. Have you ever done urbex? No. Not something that interests you? Um, it does, but... Uh... You've got to be brave. You do have to be brave. I'm much more for all scenic heights. You know, I like going to the Lake District and the Peak District and uh, having a nice long walk with lots of lovely views. But yeah, no, Urbex, it's something I'd be interested in. But I think you need to go with a few people, don't you? Like, just safety reasons alone. Yeah, I'm never sure what you might find in a room. Well, the trouble yeah. is I've watched Blair, Blair Witch one too many times. Yes, yeah. me, me too. <laughs> But I do find these sort of places fascinating. Talking of your travels, I love the, the videos, the films, that you're a very gentle filmmaker. <laughs> with Yeah, when, when you, the Lake District one, which is one of the most recent ones, yeah. for example, your, your travels, they are, they're a music fest. There's no, yeah. no chat necessary. Well, yeah, so I, I do like to do a mix of videos. And obviously, I, when I uh, first started doing YouTube, it was it was never photography related I, I created a channel just to talk nonsense but then as I started to get into film photography it photography become prevalent on my channel because I was really excited about learning you know with all these film cameras and how to develop film and all this stuff so I started making videos about what I was learning as I was learning it to share with other people right? Ah, right. I figured this out here you go this is how I do it so a lot of my followers all came from those sort of few years of pumping out these film photography videos but realistically I just love taking pictures and I don't want to talk too much about how I took the picture or why I took it I just want to take some pictures and show some pictures I guess are you getting a feel for where the app's coming from as well I just want to share my pictures and see other people's pictures yes. so yeah a lot of the videos that I do is just me walking about taking pictures showing you the pictures putting some nice music over the background this is interesting. Yeah, why, why would you have a style that you have to walk over when it's actually... Com <laughs> well, would that not have been something to do with the train? Do you think so? Is that that old? Well, it might be, actually, because it's on concrete. Yes, yeah. it's concrete, you're right. Well, we've got a picture of it now, so... Yeah, well, you've got a picture. <laughs> Leads off in another direction. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've talked about... I've got a few things on my list here. And we, we've, I knew we would do this. They've, uh, they've been mentioned. But we can, as they say on YouTube, drill down yeah. a bit more into them. Sharing. Sharing is really important here. You'll, you'll need to find a community, a whole army perhaps of photographers to, mm -hmm. to make this work, won't you? Because, because I, the world's a big place. And we often say it's a small place, but it's a big place when it comes to locations. You're right, yeah, it, it is a big place. And I think the whole concept with the Kickstarter was actually not just to help fund it, but to have a, an immediate user base, mm. like a, a good starting point. Because obviously if you back the project, you're only paying your either first month or your first year subscription up front. So you're basically saying, actually, I like the sound of that. I'm willing to pay, you know, say my first year subscription onto the app, which means that, say, if I get, you know, 5,000, 10,000 people, however many people back it, that's a immediate user base of at least 10,000 yeah. people to then get on there, start telling their friends, I'm on this app. It's really good. It is free, but there's some extra benefits if you want it. 
why don't you check it out? And then obviously we will come into advertising and marketing and, you know, trying to spread the word of it wherever we can. And I'm lucky that I've got, you know, like 10 years experience in, in marketing to kind of do that to an extent myself, but, you know, take on some people that will help. The marketing bit is going to be essential, isn't it? And as you say, your morning, your, morning. your background of being a marketeer. Yeah. That's going to come into its own. Hopefully, yeah. I like to think that I've got some knowledge when it comes to marketing. And um, obviously, it will take a lot of work, but I'm happy to do that. One of the tools that I, I thought, oh, oh, now that's a good idea, mm. um, is something that I think is becoming more and more important in this uh, ever litigious world that we live within, which is uh, model release forms. Yes. The yeah. idea of being able to have a model... Um, release form and i'll come to geographical concerns in a second but the idea of having it yeah that's strong yeah Just so sign it on your phone i mean that does actually i already have a pdf signer with a form on there i technically already have that on my phone but people don't it's interesting that you say that because anytime i speak to someone about the tools and i list off what they are i always get a different thing come back to me okay. someone says oh i really like that tool or someone yeah. says oh i really like that one so it's interesting to see that everyone has different takes but everyone at least takes one thing that they go i like that yeah you can actually do that already if you're uh, tech savvy enough but uh it's just nice that it's included in one easy place so you can open your app go right tools there's my model release form mm -hmm. put it in front of you know whoever you're taking photos of they can sign with their finger and there you go you've got a sign form which means you're covered for any future problems how's it going to work internationally that well so obviously the the laws are different everywhere you are and if we're talking street photography here and taking pictures of people on the street this will be down to you so i think either as a App developer, we can have varying different forms incorporated on there based on the geographical location or something we can include is that people can import or export their own forms. Like it's essentially just a PDF reader that's signable so people can put their own forms on there and tailor it to wherever uh, they're going, right. right? Other tools, mm -hmm. Light Meter was one. Um, you mentioned a few others. Light Meter, I thought, so. um, and again, I know there's apps you can get for doing this, but yeah. to have everything in one place, that's, that's really what you're marketing here, isn't so, it? So, yeah, the whole, there's only really sort of one or two things that uh, I would say are new and aren't in existence already. What we're doing is just bringing all these photographic tools and apps that may already be in existence and putting them into one easy to find location as if you know like you see me carry my tool bag here yeah. you don't want to know what i've got in here honestly well i do actually now you said ask me i've probably got everything what have you got in there do you actually want to know i do actually <laughs> what's in your camera bag is a feature i've been waiting to do for a long time because people carry I've got a the comb, funniest stuff uh, needle and thread, why have you got needle and thread fire starter pocket knife i've got a whistle doesn't work Goes well with the do, train, do you it? know there'll be people along the train track further on thinking, <gasps> thinking the started, ghost of coal green? Why well, yeah. have you got a fire starter? Well, <laughs> well you never know when you might need to start a fire, Neil. Well, well I suppose so. What's what? in the main? That was what's in the back. What's in the main compartment? So obviously, I've got my camera, water, glasses, wallet. I've got some nuts and seeds in there. Yeah. Uh, oh, another film camera. Whoever. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's an. Is that a Olympus, Olympus trip? trip? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I have one of those. Remember the advert for that? Yes, David yeah. Bailey. David Bailey. Yeah. The lens on this is insane for the Just because my one doesn't work any longer. Is, uh, that, is that the flat? Is that a ring flash? Uh, or is that, no, no, that's the, that's the charge, light meter. Yeah, for the light Sorry. meter. So yeah. those are the yeah, yeah, cells yeah. for the light meter. What but a yeah. daft question. Oh, it's just so great. Like the location, so you've got, we've got, I think it's one meter, one and a half, yeah. three meters infinity. And I know that one meter is about one big stride for me. Yeah. So I know literally if you're that far away or if you're three big strides from me, or infinity so and it's, it's just great you can change your aperture but it's got the light meter if you leave it on auto yeah. just set your distance and then there you go done I want a picture of you doing that hold on <laughs> hold on this is where I have to try and balance I'll throw I'll throw my questions on the floor <laughs> we're going rogue <laughs> <laughs> anything could happen right to you no not to me no just in the yeah otherwise it would be too contrived and yeah. like I asked you to do it and you know perish that thought there we go it's a great looking camera, isn't it? Yeah, so it's light, easy. It's, it's still something that I, I bet you at weddings get asked this question. Do you think you're David Bailey? <laughs> well, you should see me at a wedding, Neil. I usually have at least three cameras hanging on from various parts Do you take the trip? Body. Yeah, I take film cameras well, with me. You deserve that question then. I usually have a large format camera in my Do boot, you? actually. Yeah, ah. just if the. 
not usually for the couple actually if I ever see an interesting guest I'm working on a bit of a personal project but this is like for the entirety that I do wedding photography called Guests ah. and it's just portraits of guests that I find interesting isn't that well, I find that fascinating because I've started doing that myself Have you? Yeah, yeah because I think they're the untold heroes of weddings it's not just about the couple when yeah. do you do that that Usually at any point I have some quiet time, maybe right. during where the people are sitting down to eat or, you know, later in the day or if the lighting's nice. So I just, I usually approach them at some point out of the day, especially if they're wearing an outfit and I just say, look, really like your style, really like what you're wearing. Yeah. Would you be up for having a portrait with me? Um, so I've got a bit of a catalogue built already, but yeah. I just, I'm keen to keep it growing for as long as I can and one day do something with them. Weddings are a fantastic subject fest yes and um i think you know we are lucky to do it i take it for granted because i shoot you know 50 odd weddings a year sure kevin does as well actually doesn't he i'm pretty sure he does no, he's t- <laughs> 20 and down, 20 yeah. and he'll he, he folds himself into a corner and just me yeah. <laughs> and sobs just me slogging away then is it <laughs> but you know that's although, where all our bookings are going you yeah, to me <laughs> <laughs> they're like love filled days right so although you're still there to work the energy that you get from everyone because they're there to, for a nice time it's it's a joy to mm. to be part of right you just you can't help even if i'm in a bad mood on the way to a wedding i'm like i could really do without this i'm not feeling it within half an hour of being there you've got a smile on your face because yeah. everybody is happy and everybody's like filled with love and looking forward to a good day so yeah it's a nice it's a nice environment to be a part of you know for me at this time of year sometimes twice a week you know so what's the hardest point of a wedding for you now, it could be challenging because it's one of those moments where there's nothing going on or it could be one of those... I don't find hyper-stressful moments. I've never, I've never found myself in an anxious state. I know it's, I know it's a one-off and blah, 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 but um, for some people that's, oh, if you don't get that, then it's, oh, that's the day done. Yeah, see, no, I've been doing it uh, five years now and like I say, if I do about 50 weddings a year, I've probably shot over 300 weddings and I feel like I'm at a point now where... I'm documentary. I'm here to document your day. Yeah. As it unfolds, I'll get what I get. And, you know, I think most of our clients, you know, we, we're up front with them. They know what we, you know, if something's missed, it is what it is, right? You can, you can only do what you can do. What's the question you get most asked at a wedding? <laughs> this is a loaded question, by the way. Yeah. Uh, are you going to take a picture of me with that? <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you walk in the toilet with three cameras around your neck. I usually say no, I charge extra for that. <laughs> See, you have to have your, your have answers. Have I, answer my answer, well, my, my question is always, um, how many have you taken today? Yeah. To which my response is always four and a half gallons. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, we're going to come back and talk. Uh, I've got another question for you, and it's probably my closing question, um, which uh, I, I think I should probably probably have a musical interlude before just just something to separate this because it's an important question but I do want to invite you to have a chat with me in, in our extra mile uh, which which follows probably not this program today because this is a special but it'll be an extra mile coming where I want to talk to you about your approach because um, it's a theme of your book but it's also a theme of now I know of when you ask people to have a portrait at a wedding. And I think for a lot of photographers, me included, Mm -hmm. I think it's tricky sometimes to ask somebody out of the blue, will they have a portrait? But we'll come back to that in a second. The the audience that listen regularly to this uh, programme, or have just started listening, I've got used to one question that I ask, which has formed very much the the basis of the end of a programme. And it's uh, me asking somebody what their why is, and I'm not going to ask you that. Um, (laughs) I'm going to go left field and ask a question. Have you ever watched Dragon's Den? I have watched Dragon's Den, yes. Who's your favourite dragon? Uh, oof, I don't know. Is That's it? Like saying, who's your favourite? What's your favourite picture? <laughs> Do I have to pick any of them? Uh, I don't know. I think Deborah Meaden. Let's oh, go with her. Just yeah, because she's uh, she's great. She's strong willed. She could be very cutting. Yeah, she'd yeah. make a good wife. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'd like to have to be the one that balances the budget because yeah, she, she'd no, want sure. that. That's the thing that she really drills down on, isn't well, it? Surely she'd look after that then and uh, you'd be able to sit at home and just sit in your pants. 
<laughs> and I'm not sure that's going to attract Deborah Mead and to, no, to want no. to be. Well, it depends what you look like. <laughs> that's true. Not me. Not me but... Let's move on swiftly, shall we? If you're not aware of what Dragon's Den is, Tom's going to explain. <laughs> Tom's not going to explain. <laughs> what uh, is it, Tom? Yeah, so I mean, Dragon's Den is a show where people go on and pitch their ideas yeah. uh, to try and get some funding. To um, pretty well-known financial and business figures. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So on the British version, we've got Deborah Meaden. Uh, oh, God, I can't remember all the names now. They changed. They, they, they is they Duncan Banatar still on there? No, no, he's not on this one. Uh, anyway, one of the dragons, and of course in different countries there are different dragons yep. because it's a, it's a popular franchise, isn't it? But one of the dragons we have is a chap called Stephen Bartlett who is um, probably the youngest dragon I think that's ever sat on that, that panel who's been tremendously successful... Um, has a podcast that, that's doing really well in vision and in sound. Millions of downloads per week. God, I hate him already. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, lo- I really enjoy his programmes. And as a... I don't want to sound patronising, but I do have a few years on Stephen. As, as an interviewer, I, I think he has grown in stature really? in the way that he... he, he uh, oh, he's just a very, very natural... Yeah. Um, interviewer definitely no doubt about that but Stephen is on that panel because of his digital marketing experience Mm -hmm. and uh, you probably can see where this is going now Um, and and I wonder what he might say about the marketing of of your project because I'm thinking he might say because this is what you're looking for in Kickstarter and and it's a challenge 150 to 180 is what you said isn't it yes one of the things he might say is um, 150 to 180 grand. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem enough. Yeah, so I mean, this is to get version one released. Version one will have what has been mentioned, but obviously the subscription is then to fund future improvements, fund to keeping it running. Like, so the, the main developer that I have on board uh, is a guy I actually know who helped, who was one of the main developers, which is funny enough, we were talking about earlier, on um, the app what free words oh I love it when the story comes full circle funny that isn't it so he developed that for them wow. was one of the main developers on it and he's going to be helping with this so yeah. I've sat down with him and he's basically the one that went through all the costings like right. he knows what he's doing I'm a marketer a photographer I don't know as much about applications and costings as he does but with the introduction of like AI and chat GPT-4 it is a lot cheaper and quicker nowadays you know, there's there's a few people that have messaged me saying the same as you, saying, oh, I used to be in software development myself. And I was like, maybe 10, 15 years ago, but it's even this year, it has changed drastically That's with it. the introduction of AI. Right. And he's gone through all the costings and he's saying, to get this ready for version one, I need about that amount of money. Now, one of the other dragons, Peter Jones... Um, who always has a very pragmatic approach to stuff, might say, what about the numbers of people around the world? Are there enough professionals to match the amount of amateurs that you'll, uh, you'll attract, hopefully? Are there enough professionals who will say, I'll pay for this? Mm, I think so. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. But, yes, yeah, so like I say, I've spoken to a multitude of people, the vast majority of professionals within either the wedding industry, landscape photographers, film photographers, YouTube photographers, all these kinds of people who have all shown interest. When I started trying to bring this back to life uh, sort of last year, I didn't know whether I was going to do it. You know, I was just going to leave it. And it's, the only reason I'm doing this is because all these other people told me to. They were they like, we it. love this yeah. idea, you need to do it. You're at least, at the very least, give it a go. You know, yeah. what's the worst can happen is that it doesn't reach funding and I, I keep trying another way, you know? Sorry, Neil, I'm going to have to stroke this dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. It's all right. Well, what is he? He's a proper English bulldog. He's just dribbled all over me. Oh, look at him. Proper dribbler. What's his name? Albert. Albert. It's beautiful. It's a good name for an English bulldog. Look at my wet knee. <laughs> <laughs> look at your trousers. have actually gone a different colour. That's Look at that. Soaked through with dog spit. <laughs> yeah, what a magnificent dog. I thought he was a bulldog, but... Yeah. These days, there's so many crosses around. He's going to be a cocker bull or something like that, isn't it? <laughs> they're all mixed with a, with a poodle, aren't they? They're all, they're all a something poo. Yeah, I know. jack poo <laughs> So here is my final question. I will ask you the why, but I'm going to save that uh, for our chat in a moment. But here's my question. Rewinding to Dragon's Den. Stephen Bartlett, you're, you're, you're stood in the, the, the den. 
maybe with your uh, your expert as well the app um, developer for you and uh, Stephen says look I think this is going to need a lot more work mm -hmm. than uh, than what you think it is I know social media he's going to say because that's his background yep. I know digital marketing because that is his uh, his background but he's going to say look I tell you what I'll give you all the money 180,000 pounds but I want 45% of the business mm -hmm. what would I say no <laughs> 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 the, and I keep mentioning it that I've had feedback from so many photographers and I mention it multiple times in the campaign in the video is that I want this to be an app made for photographers by photographers I don't want someone like Mark Zuckerberg or this lovely Dragon's Den gentleman Martin, you know yeah. getting their hand on it and turning it into some more of a money making it would be lovely if I made a bit of money off of this to have a more comfortable life you know I've put a time and effort into it but realistically I want to make it because I want the app that's why I want it I want to use the app I'm not I'm not in it for, for money or you know, I don't care if I don't make anything and everything that gets made goes straight back into it I feel like this could be such a good app I want to use it and I feel like there are many other people out there that do and like I've mentioned with the feedback and stuff I just want continual growth and feedback from photographers so it is an app for them by them does that make sense like it's your app as much as it's my app so I'd say no to so I'd say no to him <laughs> and my thanks to Tom Humble who'll be back this coming Friday on the Extra Mile channel only to share how he approaches photographing strangers which is fitting given the first part of our conversation today Extra Mile number 51 features Tom Humble talking about photographing strangers all links to today's conversation will be on the show page on photowalk.show. The Photo Walk is a Loading Zone production.